Hi again, everyone. This is Ms. Brown, and we're on day three of making inferences and drawing conclusions in fiction. So without further ado, let's get our presentation started. Okay, day three, finding inferences and drawing conclusions in fiction. Today, we're going to review how to make inferences and draw conclusions in fiction. We will also use a character's actions in a story to make inferences about that character. Today, you will need a notebook and a pencil. Now, quick recap again. An inference is something that you think is true based on the information that you have in the text. A conclusion is something you decide after thinking about all of the information that you have. Now, remember yesterday we created the book plus brain equals belief chart to help us make inferences and draw conclusions, okay? So if you did not get this image um, drawn yourself, it, I've included it again, so you may draw that because like I told you yesterday, we will be using this throughout the rest of the week. Remember, the book is what we already know about the text based off of what we've read. Brain would be our thought bubble or our inference bubble where we would get clues and make inferences about what's going on, which leads us to our light bulb, which is our belief. So our inference always believes, I mean, excuse me, always connects to the conclusion. So the inference makes the conclusion, in other words. Okay, for our guided practice today, we are going to go back into time and look at a story called The Three Little Pigs. I'm sure you guys know The Three Little Pigs. I used to love that story as a young child, um, and I, I love it to this day. But remember, when we make inferences in fiction, we, all, we do it with text, but we also do it with characters. So we've been making inferences with text. Today, we're going to include characters and we're going to look at the character's traits and actions and make inferences about what that character is doing or saying and then draw a conclusion from that. So I will click on the link and read the story of the three pigs to you and then we'll move on to the next slide. So the three little pigs. Once upon a time there were three little pigs who lived with their mother. One day, their mother told them that they were old enough to go out into the world and make a living for themselves. She said, watch out for the big bad wolf because he will eat you. She also told them, build your houses nice and strong so that you will be safe from the wolf. Then she said, goodbye, my sons, and good luck. The three pigs went their separate ways. The first little pig saw a man stacking straw. The first little pig asked the man, may I have some of that straw to build a house? The man agreed and the first little pig built his house very quickly. It wasn't a very strong house. One day the big bad wolf came and knocked on the first little pig's door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the little pig answered, no, no, I won't let you come in, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Well, said the wolf, then I'll huff and puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew down, he blew the house down and ate the little pig. The second little pig was going along the road when he met a man stacking a big pile of sticks. The second little pig asked the man, may I have some of those sticks to build myself a house? The man gave them to him and the second little pig built his house of sticks. Then one day the second little pig heard a knock at the door. It was the wolf. And he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig said, no, no, I won't let you in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. The wolf answered, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Then he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. And then he blew the house down and ate the little pig. The third little pig was walking on the road when he met a man with a load of bricks. The little pig asked him for enough to build a house. The man agreed and the third little pig built a strong house of bricks. The wolf came and knocked at his door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig said, no, no, I won't let you in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. 
Well, said the wolf, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow the house down. The frustrated wolf said, little pig, little pig, I know where there's a nice field of turnips. The little pig asked, where? The wolf answered, at Mrs. Smith's farm. We can go there together tomorrow at nine o'clock. The little pig nodded and said, nine o'clock, I'll be ready. The next morning, the pig got up earlier at eight o'clock and went to Mrs. Smith's farm and got all the turnips he could carry and was home again before nine. The big bad wolf came around nine o'clock sharp and asked, little pig, little pig, are you ready? But the little pig said, I've already gone to the field and gotten some turnips, but thanks anyway. This made the wolf very mad, but in a calm voice, he said, very well then. By the way, I know where there is a nice ripe apple tree. The little pig asked, where is it? The wolf answered, it's in the orchard across the field. I will come tomorrow at eight o'clock and we can go together to pick some juicy sweet apples. The little pig then said, eight o'clock, I'll be ready. The next morning, the little pig got up at seven o'clock, ran to the apple tree across the field in the orchard, climbed up the tree and started picking apples. Suddenly, he saw the big bad wolf coming. The sneaky wolf said, how are those apples? The pig answered, great, here, catch one. And he threw it so far that while the wolf was going after it, the pig jumped out of the tree and ran all the way home. Later on, the wolf came knocking and said, little pig, little pig, there is a fair in town. Can I come by tomorrow at seven o'clock and can we go there together? The pig replied, seven o'clock, I'll be ready but the pig went to the fair earlier and brought a butter churn barrel. On his way home from the fair, he saw the big bad wolf coming up a hill. The little pig hid himself in the barrel, which accidentally fell over and rolled down the hill. It rolled so fast that it scared the wolf into running away. He didn't even get to go to the fair. The little pig ran home with his churn and was safe. Later on, the wolf went to the pig's house and told him about the fast rolling barrel, which had scared him. The pig laughed out loud and said, I brought that barrel at the fair and I was inside it when it came down the hill. This made the wolf furious and he said, little pig, that's it. I'm going to come through your chimney and eat you. But the pig made a giant fire in the fireplace and put a big pot of water on it. Just as the water started to boil, the wolf started coming down the chimney and the little pig took the cover off of the pot and the wolf fell in. The little pig cooked him, ate him for dinner and thought to himself, not so little anymore. And the pig lived happily ever after. So we've read the story of the three little pigs. And again, I've attached the link to the video so you should be able to access it. But if not, um, you can go back a little bit and you can go back to where I've read the story to get clues, okay? So in your journals or in your notebooks rather, you're going to write book, brain, and belief. And if you wanna put short story in parentheses or put a slash in short stories like I've done, that's fine. Because again, this is interchangeable. You can use them with novels and short stories. But for book slash short, short story, we have that the three little pigs have left home. They all built house, they all build their houses. However, when the wolf comes and tries to destroy them, and he'll try he also tries to eat the pigs, okay? Brain. Two of the pigs build weak homes that are easily destroyed. Those pigs are eaten, but the third pig builds a strong house of bricks, and the wolf was unable to destroy it. So our belief is I believe that the third pig listened to his mother and built a strong house, which is why he was able to defeat the wolf. Now we have some vocabulary terms in the box. Wise, kind, tyrant, happy, argumentative, concerned, careless, vengeful. We are going to make some inferences about the characters. So we have the mother pig, we have the first and second pig, the third pig, and then our big bad wolf. So for the guided practice, I want you to make an inference based on using these vocabulary words, 
for each of the pigs and then tell me why you chose that word. Now, if you would like to use Google to look up the definitions of these words or use a dictionary, that is perfectly fine. So if you want, I would pause the video here if I were you. I would work for about five or 10 minutes and then resume the video when you are done. Okay, so you should have paused for five to 10 minutes and you should have filled out in your notebooks um, those use those vocabulary words to figure out how those characters traits are and then get evidence from the text to support it. So you should have that completed. Now I'm going to go over my responses. So our first character was the mother. We use the word concern, okay? I know this because she warned the pigs to build strong houses so that the wolf will not be able to destroy them. The first and second pigs are careless. I know this because they don't listen to their mother's warning and build their houses too quickly and out of weak materials. Remember, she warned them to build the homes with strong materials so that the wolf can stay away, but they didn't listen. The third pig is why. I know this because he listened to his mother's warnings and built a strong house of bricks. You also could say he's wise because he tricked the wolf on numerous occasions, like at the fair and at the apple tree and different places like that. So he, he's very wise and he's very intelligent. He knows how to trick the wolf and keep the wolf from attacking him and eating him. The wolf is a tyrant. I know this because he threatens the first two pigs before blowing their houses down and eating them up. You could also add how he continues to harass and try to eat the third pig as well. For your independent practice, you guys are going to read the passage. So it's a short story excerpt. You're gonna make sure that you pay very close attention to what's going on in this story, as well as to the traits of each of the characters. From there, you're gonna move on to the next slide and you'll get further instructions. So what I'm going to do is suggest that you pause your video and that you read this short story. So I would pause for about five minutes. And then when you're done reading, you can press play and then we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so you should have paused your video and read that short story. So we're moving on to what you're supposed to do. So in your notebook, I need you, you can either draw a chart or you can do like a T chart and just draw a list on each side, however you want to do it. But on one side, I need book, brain, and belief. On the other side, I need, I need character inferences. And the three characters, as you should already know, are Sonny, Marcus, and the rich man, okay? so. Again, on the left, we have book, brain, and belief. On the right, we have Sonny, Marcus, and the rich man. These are our vocabulary terms. And like I told you before, you are allowed to use a dictionary to figure out the meanings of these words. So again, if I were you, I would pause the video here. I would take my time and use the vocabulary words in the dictionary. I would look them up and use those words to figure out the best inferences you can make about the traits of each of these characters. And then explain why you believe that vocabulary word fits in that box. So again, I would pause here, take about 10 minutes to do this assignment, and then we'll move on to the next activity. Okay, you should have paused your video for 10 minutes and completed the charts. So now I'm going over the answers. So for our book, Brain and Belief, for book we have a rich man, a vain woman in an evening gown, and a shy man are all in a ballroom. For Brain, the rich man seems moody, Sonny is conceited, and Marcus is insecure as he has a crush on Sonny but thinks that she is out of his league. 
you can tell this by the way that he approaches her. He's very shy with how he approaches her. He thinks in his head, it tells you what he thinks about as she walks in the room and what he thinks about her. It also tells you what he thinks about the rich man. And it lets you know that the rich man has somewhat of an attitude, okay? Which leads us to our belief. Marcus, Sonny, and the rich man are at a fancy party. The rich man is rude and has an attitude. Sonny is very much conceited and rude as well. Marcus does not feel as though he fits in because the rich man steps on his shoes and Sonny ignores him. So moving on to our character traits, we've discovered that Sonny is boorish, okay? If you look that word up, it's another word for conceited or vain, okay? I know this because she's highly conceited when she ignores Marcus. That means she's kind of stuck up. She kind of thinks she's better than people. She also expects the rich man to kiss her hand without giving him a proper introduction. Marcus is diffident. I know this because he's very shy and he seems insecure about around Sonny and the rich man. If you look up diffident in the dictionary or on Google, it'll, it's like a similar word for being shy, okay, and insecure. But he's not as confident as the other two characters in the book. The rich man is cantankerous, okay? I know that's a big word. But if you look that up, it means that he's kind of moody and he's got, you know, he has an attitude. And we know this because he insults Sonny by not kissing her hand. And he also steps on Marcus's shoes when he leaves and he fails to apologize to Marcus after he does that. All right. Now that we've completed our independent practice, we're going to finish up with our written reflection. So today, you're going to read the excerpt at the bottom. It's from the novel, Dust of Eden. From this excerpt, you're going to make an inference about how the character Mina, who's speaking, feels about her brother going to war. So I'll read the excerpt and in your notebook, just jot down a sentence or two, or two about how you feel that Mina feels about her brother going to war. So make an inference about how she feels about this. Their shouts make the floorboards creak and the walls tremble. Even dust stays huddled in the corners in fear. The night seems more alive than ever, filled with angry words and banging doors and sobs. My brother will die for a country that does not love us back. Remember, you're writing how you think, or you're making an inference rather, about how Mina feels about her brother going to war. Again, write this in your notebooks. And when you're done, you um, can write this down as well for tomorrow. We're going to recap the lesson. We're going to introduce making inferences in writing. Okay. And then we're going to practice by writing our own short story with our own characters where we have to add clues and hints in our stories to make an inference. So tomorrow's lesson will be shorter, but it'll be very fun. Thank you all again so very much for participating in these lessons. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.